Hi, Paul Nolan here for MYT, and today's a very exciting day. We've just had the announcement of the latest beta test for Ableton Live 10.1, so let's waste no more time, jump straight in and see what's new under the hood. So here we are in a live 10.1 session, and as all the headlines are suggesting, hallelujah, the first thing that we're gonna look at is the ability to freeze sidechain channels. We've been asking for this for a long time, and finally it's here. So, again, nothing too flashy here. I've just got a remix that I've literally just finished in the last couple of hours. And you can see I've got a sidechain compressor on here using the glue compressor. I would normally use Kickstart or LFO tool. I've become more of a, a volume enveloping or a volume curve shaping type of enthusiast in recent times, both for the sound that it gives me, but also because it allows you to freeze the channels with the side chain on using this method but now you've got total freedom if you do want to use side chain compression so again i can right click here hit freeze track and as you can see absolutely freezes very very simply one of the other big additions in live 10.1 is the ability to include return and master effects in outputted multi-track stems from your live session so this is absolutely fantastic for printing parts for remixes or sending parts or stems multi-tracks for mix down with included effects on them both on the master channel and on any return channels so in effect what happens is it's the same as hitting the solo button shall we say on any particular track and then opening up a new audio track and adding audio into that track using the resampling output and essentially printing the stems one at a time this is going to be a huge time saver going forward and you can activate it this way so you can go to rendered track and again you can select all individual tracks you can select the selected tracks only or any of the individual tracks that you want to work with and then engage include return and master effects so again another major game changer and another workflow time saver so another aspect of live 10.1 which is well worth talking about is the user interface and navigation enhancements chief among them the ability now to resize the overview now i can see an exploded 50,000 feet up overview of the entirety of the session in a nice and convenient way where in the past this was a little bit squashed and it was really not so much of a useful tool anymore so to the right hand side of that you also have these two new buttons here h and w now if i was to sort of zoom in a little bit here and you know sort of go into a certain section here i can hit these buttons h and then w and you can see that the tracks are resized to fit in to the entirety of the arrangement available window space so i don't have to go to the top corner here no prizes for guessing what the keyboard commands are h for height or horizontal w for width and then yeah you basically have the ability to maneuver through the session quite nicely another addition here is to be able to make a time selection like this hit Z on the keyboard, or Z if you're across the Atlantic. Sounds a bit silly, an English guy saying that, really. But you can then hit Z on the keyboard, and you can see that your selection zooms straight into focus. This can be very, very handy for making clip-level adjustments, making automation adjustments. Very, very easy. Now, if you want to get back out from there, you can hit X on the keyboard. So Z and X bring you in and out. It's a very smooth thing, really, really nice. Now, moving on from that, you could even, say for example, go into a, a track like this, go out of the envelopes view. You can then look at uh, you know, a particular note, maybe you wanna zoom in to get a bit of context here. And you can hit height or H, actually yeah, in height it means horizontal, and then the width in order to actually get back to where you were previously so you can actually see there it's very very useful to be able to 
get everything into the space of the window so there are some really nice rapid keyboard commands here you don't even need a modifier key like for example command control shift alt anything like that it's very very quick and actually is starting to resemble a little bit like the um like the keyboard shortcuts within pro tools when you've got a command key focus on which allows for very easy single keystroke maneuvers through large swathes of the application so the ability to maneuver through these particular sessions especially when you've got large numbers of tracks greatly improved here another way of working with navigation on a more global level is to use the keyboard shortcut alt or option and then u and you can see we get a nice folding away of any particular section in there you go so you can see the whole track there and then another way of working on individual tracks is if i was to select within track 23 here i'll be able to use option or alt plus and minus in order to individually zoom those tracks on a vertical level and again if i was to select multiple channels same thing still applies. So you can then get context and be able to work with particular channels very, very easily and get them into a position where you would like to edit them in an optimal way. So another of the key aspects in Live 10.1, which is very much worth talking about, huge enhancements, is with automation. So let's look at this because there's quite a lot of new features here. I'm gonna make a time selection. You'll start noticing small differences already. And I'm just going to use the waveform zoom here or the, the clip zoom. And there we go, we're in. Now, first of all, you can see this is automation that I've recorded in from Push as a live performance. Now, one of the things I can do is that I can right click and you can see all sorts of new options here from edit value, which means it will allow me to edit if I was to go to a single breakpoint. Let's say, for example, I put one here. I can right click and I can say edit value. You can see it turns that into a text box. So I can make that say 25%. So if you are wanting to be very, very accurate, very precise about where your automation points are, that is an absolutely brilliant new feature. Now, the next thing I can do again, if I make this selection, right click, I can then select here for simplify envelope. Now let's have a look at what that does. Now you can see that actually strips away any unnecessary or unwanted automation breakpoints that might have been recorded during automation and actually replaces them with the minimum necessary amount of automation breakpoints. Automation breakpoints can actually take up quite a lot of CPU and these types of controls have been in existence for quite a long time in the likes of Logic Cubase and particularly Pro Tools where you could select an option called Thin Automation which has been very very useful for a number of years so it's great to see Ableton working towards this kind of standard and you can see it's also tried to use curved automation in order to you know make the curve as like the original performance as possible so that can actually really really help matters because now i can just take a single point here move this along i can add extra points if i want and if i need to you know delete a little section it's going to make life a lot lot simpler the other thing that you can now do as well if we find a little blank phase here we can then right click and we can insert shapes so as you can see, I've just inserted the sine wave there, which actually will give lots more creative possibilities to your automations. And again, I can swap this out for triangles. I can swap it out for, you know, parabolic curves up and down, which will be very useful and very quick for being able to insert automation at particular points. And again, it's great if you want to be super accurate, super quick. You can do these lovely little curves. You can do little sort of double curves here to sort of give that your know, sort of mountain range feel, if you will, squares. And you've got a huge amount of flexibility and control here. So let's like swap that back into a sine wave. And you can also see here, if I was to just zoom in here using the, the Z key, 
you've now got the ability you can see here extra little points have popped up little squares where the middle and the corners of the time selection is between this little clip here and what i can do is i can actually scale the automation and you can see it actually maintains relative difference between all of the different automation breakpoints if i drag here from the top right hand corner i can make some pretty interesting shapes in all circumstances really so again just top and bottom right hand corners left hand corners we've got some really lovely ways to work there also as well if we just zoom out a little bit here we've got the ability to scale and effectively time stretch the or the, the automation so if i was to click here on the side and i get my little sideways arrow tool here i can then move that and as you can see it will overwrite existing automation and actually make things quite easy to extend or contract automation over a specific time period so these types of automation shapes the ability to scale and also simplify and thin automation all very very welcome additions okay now we're on to the more shall we say exciting part of ableton 10.1 Ooh, all the new toys so i mean they're not that many there's only a couple really but hey they're useful so we now have channel eq and channel eq is if you will a little bit of a, a spiritual successor to the eq3 which is actually a very useful little eq which can save you the time of utilizing eq8 and getting bogged down with like really accurate eqs and you know if you want immediacy in setup just to get things sounding good as an opening gambit or if you are using the three band eq generally to use on dj mixes for example you'll notice that all three of these bands straight away low mid and high they all set up at 12 o'clock which is again quite useful especially if you're using sort of more dj led controllers to automate things in the mix so really it's it's not massively complicated you have the ability to punch in a high pass filter at 80 hertz that you cannot change and also as well you just get a low shelf which looks like it starts to roll in at around about maybe 250 and it's probably around about i don't know 75 hertz or so 80 hertz or so as a turnover frequency you've also got the ability to sweep a mid-band eq but you'll notice there's no bandwidth there's no cue control there's no making this super fine if you want that type of thing that's what the eq8 is there for but if you want just quick sweeps and immediacy in setup the channel eq is going to be great for you you've also got a high band here and again you can see it almost turns a little bit into a low pass filter here but it's got its own little resonance and its own little kink there in its curve so quite nice where that's concerned so yeah maybe we just punch this in for this little bass stab little top note that i've got here you know fairly self-explanatory the next one we've got is delay so this is replacing if you will or upgrading the simple delay the ping pong delay that kind of thing it's almost like a combination of that with some features that they've pulled from the echo plugin which has been in ableton live since version 10.0 and yeah it's a nice pretty capable little you know delay it's again not massively complicated i can take the linkage off here for the left and right channel So it's nice to be able to use that on an insert like this obviously on a return channel as well which is how you would normally use it you can also switch between three modes and this can be particularly useful when you're switching delay times here on the note sync or as i quite like to do i quite like to have a linkage here with the ability to change the delay time and if it's in repitch you'd actually hear the delays repitch as well so great for more 
interesting, trippy, weird kind of delays that kind of change and modulate over time. And you can hear the, the pitching does resolve itself after a while. So you've got the usual, you've got feedback, you've got the ability to ping pong or not to ping pong. That is the question. And then the ability to essentially change the filter as you would do in a ping pong or a simple delay. So again, just a good functional tool here. Nothing too, you know, revolutionary or, you know, world beating, but it is quite a useful little feature, a little upgrade there of the delays in live 10.1 now the other thing that's quite interesting here is you can now as predicted i thought this might be the case right from the very first moment that in wavetable which has quickly become one of my favorite synths you can now load your own wavetables and load your own audio files so a very very useful way of working so let's say, for example, I take something like, uh, let's say these one of these pads here. Let's just uh, highlight that, solo that as a loop. So maybe we just take a little section like that. Let me just change my grid to a more useful resolution. So what I can do here is I could quite happily right click and freeze that now. And while we wait for that to freeze, what we can then do is pull the frozen audio file into an audio track to access it from the MIDI track. So it's not completely locked down. It's something I do a lot where I can easily resample various elements of a track and be able to further make changes, edits, cut-ups, re-pitches, do some granular stuff with the, the warp engine or in another plugin, for example, like the Mangle or anything in Reactor, for example, and essentially just use it as another layer. This is a very typical sound design principle of freezing, flattening the track, if you will, getting hold of the raw audio and then be able to go further. So from here, I'll just add in an audio track. I'll take that particular section down, trim that down to just this particular section. And then you can basically hear that right from the beginning there. I'll go into wavetable and I can then drag and drop that straight in. Now, you've got the ability here by default to have Wavetable smooth the incoming audio to make it slightly more palatable from a harmonic perspective to be able to be used as a, as a useful synth you know, sound source, essentially. Or you can actually hit RAW and you can see you've got you know a slightly different kind of texture there. So I have absolutely no idea whether this is going to sound any good, but let's play some notes and see what happens. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't sound great, but it shows you the actual concept of being able to add in your own audio and convert it into a wavetable. So again, this puts wavetable on par with the likes of Serum, where the same thing can happen. And yeah, it's again, another great evolution where wavetable is concerned.
So there you have it, lots of exciting new features to be had in Ableton Live 10.1. The beta test has just gone public, so we shouldn't be too far away from a full release candidate and for it to be available for all artists. In the meantime, let me remind you of our online courses. We have Finish More Music, which is a patented and absolutely revolutionary workflow system in Ableton Live that allows you to finish your tracks every time guaranteed and we've also got the exciting new mix down mastery course coming on 1st of march 2019 which is going to give you a complete rundown of all of the theory practicalities and technique that you are going to need to make professional quality mix downs with your own tracks we're on pre-sale with that right now use the code mix20 at the checkout at transition.studio in order to get 20 percent off the full price. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.